Hello everyone. Yeah, so last week we started talking about characters and kind of gave a bit of an overview. And so I thought about kind of how I would approach this. So we talked about protagonists and antagonists. And I realised the easiest way to do this is to go over the different types. So that when you think about coming up with a character, you can in effect develop your own. See, this is the thing. I'm not saying that, you know, you have to do these stock things or anything like that. But when you have an idea of the building blocks, it then makes it easier to create your own, as you can then have something to refer to and develop. And over time, they sort of build up more and more. So we're going to start off with the Commonal Garden. Good hero on the trajectory of happy ending. Now, the thing is, what you have to remember with the hero character... They shouldn't be perfect. There should be some kind of flaw with them. So say, for example, the hero is really up for fighting and is really sort of gung-ho. That should be the thing that gets them into trouble. You know, that they don't really know what they're doing. I mean, equally, you look at something like, say, Aladdin, and it can be that they have this kind of aspect to them where you know, trouble seeks them out, you know, and, and they do morally dubious things, but they're doing it for the right reasons. So, for example, there's the scene where, you know, Alan's singing about, oh, I've got to steal and everything. But when the time comes and he sees the starving kid, he gives the kid food because he's not a bad guy. That is the crucial, that is the crucial thing. That is the thing. There should be a layer of sympathy there if you're going to do this type of character even if they do not entirely sympathetic things. And it's also about how they react and develop. So, I mean, for example, I, I watched Coco at the weekend, and that was a, a perfect example of someone who... I mean, we talked before about conflict, and in that one, the interesting thing was, you know, wanting to achieve your dreams, but at the same time, feeling a commitment to your family. And those are two very strong things, and in these cases, there was bit of opposition i mean it's not always the case i mean i'm lucky my family you know i've got quite a few self-employed people in my family and, and you know they've often been very you know they've been realistic but very supportive so you know but of course for the purposes of a story that doesn't always entirely work you have to have something for them to sort of bounce off in order to work and the idea is is that as we've said before your character should start off somewhere and then sort of end up somewhere else. So, for example, Aladdin, because I think it's a good example to start with, you know, starts off as this character that, in effect, is sort of scrabbling around, doing what they can to get what they want, but then realises that, in effect, sort of trying to cheat, cheat your way to winning something isn't the way that you do it, and that it's the honesty in sort of connecting with the real person inside, which is the right thing. And OK, that does sound very cheesy, but it is true, and and I think, in life, I think that's often true, that you kind of develop that kind of confidence, and you kind of learn, and it, and it is a good way of teaching that. I mean, in the case of, say, um, Hercules, you've got a character who wants to prove themselves, wants to, you know, and that there's a certain idea of what he thinks a hero is, and then subsequently learns there is more to it than the sort of the fame and glory aspect and I think I liked it because it was in effect it was a sort of a parody of a sports film and it was done very well and yeah so I mean that's the thing like so the point is even with your you know quote unquote typical hero as we've got to bear out so talking about the comic this is where AK girl comes in and she is very much I think in that mold in that she is very cocky she is very overconfident but in her case her journey is finding out who she is so sort of finding out the hero aspect first but then it's about her in effect finding out that you, you can't just sort of throw yourself into a fight and my feeling with her is developing that part of you where you sort of think your way out of a problem you don't just fight and I think for me I think that was an important aspect of the story that it isn't just about you know the way that you sort of fight in a situation it's how you think as well now next we're going to talk about going 
down the anti-hero route. Now, the important thing is you need to distinguish between an anti-hero and a villain. Now, a villain is an outright bad guy. So I would say, for example, Suicide Squad, they are more anti-hero than they are outright villain. The reason being that just, you know, yes, they do terrible things, but ultimately there is a sort of honour code that they go by. There's There are sympathetic aspects and ultimately they do band together to do the right thing, which isn't really outright villainy, which is why I think, and people have commented on this before, like a film focusing on villains is very difficult unless it is the Shakespearean tragic aspect of how they get to that point, which in theory... Um, the um, Star Wars prequels should have been and didn't quite pull off, even though there were some great moments. It's like it did kind of take away the mystique of the character a bit. But yeah, I mean, anti heroes done well, obviously terrific. I mean, a great example is um, Defense, which was Michael Douglas's character from Falling Down, which in effect, you have this person literally going through a journey. He wants to find his daughter but it's equally about his kind of mental breakdown and in effect sort of seeing the worst in society as he sort of goes on this I mean, sort of a rampage but there is this sort of frustration at the world around him and it's just such an interest if you haven't seen it I do recommend it because it does kind of throw a bit of shade on that kind of thing and this idea of just because you could do something like that. Like, I think everyone's kind of had, I think, a day like that where you're, like, on a helpline trying to, like, get your taxes sorted or talk to someone and you just, you want to just flip out. But it's, it's important not to. That's an example. And, of course, we do have, as we were talking before, about the tragic hero aspect. So with Sal, the Wonder Vixen character, we wanted to contrast from AK Girl. So she's a lot more serious. She's a lot more emotional. And without wanting to give into spoilers, there is that tragic backstory of someone who, in effect, vents their frustrations as a hero. And as Antti points out, that's not healthy. That's not what you're supposed to do. And I just I like that idea of the superhero as a mask in a, in a different way, in a sort of psychological way. And I think the way I think, I mean, some artists just like Jed and Nick and everyone conveyed it really well, like that desire to kind of prove yourself but then it sort of goes too far and i think they just they did it really well so um, so what i'm trying to say is when you think of your protagonist you're here and also it's also worth remembering a group again we mentioned suicide squad a group can be a protagonist and i mean the tricky thing with that is is that you have to divide your focus just enough and in effect, you've got to have kind of mini versions of those arcs. So you look at something like X-Men, Avengers, Justice League, etc. And when it works well, it tends to be that whoever's written it or directed it has thought, OK, where is this person going? Where does this, their through line go? Where, you know, where did this person come from? How do they inter interact here? And eventually they all have to come together. And so you have, you know, the team up and everything. And it's got to make sense. That's the thing. You've got to make sense that there needs to be conflict within the group, but there also needs to be enough that you can see why they would eventually come together and why it makes sense. And obviously there is the potential for cliche. So here's the warrior hot, hothead one. Here's the comic relief one. Here's the, you know, the leader and it's how you sort of play with those tropes that it works. So, for example, in uh, the Avengers, you've got a kind of conflict between who is the leader type. So do you go with um, Captain America, who's very much the straight shooter, very much, you know, I think this is right, therefore we should do that. Whereas you've got Iron Man, who's a lot more detached. And yes, he sort of pays for everything. But there's a certain sort of cavalier, irresponsible attitude where he is more reactive and his obviously with case of age of ultron that has consequences and i and i like that i like stories whereby a person can be well intentioned but that good intention can backfire if you do it in the wrong way and 
when those stories are done well, it's it's fantastic, and I, I you know, and I really like that. Um, but the point is, when you look at how you develop your main character, just remember they don't necessarily need to be perfect. They don't necessarily need to be someone that someone. I mean, I've often seen this thing in messages things we're talking about like someone you can relate to now someone you can relate to does not have to be identical to you you know i do not need my superhero to come from norwich for me to um you know empathize with them you know i look at say crouching tiger hidden dragon and you recognize um zang Zahi's character like she's you know she wants to prove herself and the world seems so stuffy and you know, unsympathetic. You don't necessarily need to come from that particular time in China in order to have some kind of parallel that you can relate to your own life. The best stories I find sort of have an element of that um, particular region or that kind of culture and identity, but there's also the universal aspect, which is you could be from anywhere, but you would know that story. And again, it comes to, back to this whole collective consciousness and a big part of that is your central character and so again we go back to the whole write what you know part of this which is you need to know this character and you need to know where they're going and how they react to something so for example one good exercise with this is you interview your character you talk to them and you you ask them you know what do you think of this you know what what toothbrush brand do you like you know what tv shows do you watch and those details can seem small and incidental but it is how they react that can give you the chance to sort of think about their character because i mean let's let's say for example vibes and sally were in a supermarket and they were buying toothpaste vibes would buy the toothpaste brand that looked cool and you know probably would go for like a main brand because she knows the name and it's near on the shelf is convenient and she'd grab it sally on the other hand would go right well well you know this this one's got good reviews this one looks good it's also you know it's not a name brand and it's also cheaper so therefore i will get this one so in that instance incidental but it gives you insight into the character so thinking about these things can then subsequently help you with the larger aspects and as i say people talk about the hero's journey if you take anything away from this video just remember this what journey is your character going on it doesn't matter if they are going to school for the first time or fighting off monsters there has to be a kind of progression to how they do it where they come from and where they end up and if you can focus on that and develop that you will create a character that people want to follow, even if they don't necessarily have full sympathy for them, even if they don't necessarily fully recognise them, because you've combined that distinctness with a degree of universality that everyone recognises. OK, so that is the end of this today. I just want to say a big, big thank you to all the Patreon backers that help us out. And also, I have had a little talk with... A local company called Green Farm Coffee and I'm in the process of trying it out and if all goes to plan you could be seeing a big update very soon. Anyway thank you very much for watching this. If you have any questions about developing characters next week we'll be looking at antagonists so villains and so forth and please you know get in contact and we'll be happy to have a, have a chat and like I say comment below if you've got any specific questions. All right, thank you very much for listening and much love.